Good morning everyone, who else like us has to have coffee first thing in the morning? I cannot eat anything right away, I have to have coffee, sometimes two cups of coffee. This is coffee number one today. So our plan for the video today is we're going to take you through a day in the life here, what it's like to be here in the tiny house, living at the tiny house, maybe staying for a day, staying for a couple days, just what it's like to be in the area in general. I'm right in front of my computer at the moment at the kind of dining area, but I also dub it as a desk. One thing we don't have here is Wi-Fi, but we are able to most times um, go on our personal hotspot on our phone, depending on the wind. We realized I think the wind can affect cell phones, so sometimes we don't have internet, but most times we do. So what are you up to over here? Just, you know, getting some work done, reading some news, catching up on whatever happened overnight that I missed out on. But usually for us, it doesn't matter where we are, whether we're home, whether we're traveling, whether we're here, we usually just get up and we're really, really quiet in the morning. Sometimes we don't talk for like an hour and we'll just sit at our laptops and drink our, our coffee. But that's generally our routine pretty much everywhere. By the way, if you're watching this for the first time, you don't know who we are, my name's Anna and Trevor is behind the camera. We are at the Delightful Travelers. So we did just wake up, but I'll show you where we are sleeping for those of you that are curious. Right up here in the loft area. Yeah, so you guys might be wondering what it's like to sleep up here. So as we said in previous videos, kind of where Trevor is at the very edge, you can actually fully sit up, but here, not really, like you kind of have to bend your head a little bit, but really you're just gonna be lying down up here. And honestly, I find it super cozy up here. I love sleeping up here. We've probably been here for a few days now, and I just find I sleep really well. The windows are open even though it's kind of chilly. Mm -hmm. It's turning into fall as we film this, so there's like a nice cool breeze coming in. We have warm blankets up here. We put a fan on too, just to you know keep it nice and chill, the air nice and chilly. It's nice and crisp. So all you hear as you sleep is like the wind and nature, and it's just so quiet. There's a few other cottages around here, but in general, we never hear a soul. It's like we're in the middle of the forest, all on our own. Love that feature. Plus, you can probably tell by the finishings, it's a modern style tiny house. So we have the modern city loft, as we like to call it, like our old place we used to own, in the city of Halifax, in the middle of the forest. So a lot of you guys might be wondering, but what's it like to live in a small space, to be here for a longer period of time, days at a time, together all the time, <laughs> no space from each other, what's it like? So if you want to know how big the space is, it's about 285 square feet. Uh, I don't know what that is in square meters, but I'll put it on the screen. So it's small. It's a small space, but, and we work together and do everything together. Work we're, together, are, live together, we're married, we are, travel we're, together. We're around each other 24-7. I know everyone can't do that, but that's fine. What this place really makes you think about when you come to visit, hopefully you guys come to visit to stay here, by the way, at some point, but it really makes you think of what you need to live with. It is, and I mean, no, we travel a lot, so we basically travel with a suitcase and a backpack each, and it really, that in general makes us think about what we actually yeah. require to live. You know, our laptops, the clothing that we have, what's important, mm -hmm. and then all the excess stuff that you really don't need. It's and kind so, of yeah, great. It makes you think about like what's what's essential and what's not. Yeah, and just not having clutter. I mean, let's be honest. How many of you? And we used we were in the same boat as well, but we've been downsizing. Most people have a lot of clutter and a lot of things they don't use. Yeah, for sure. So we've been working on trying to kind of yeah. get rid of that. Yeah, but going back to like the space thing, I think for us. If one of us, you know, feels tired, doesn't want to talk, that kind of thing, we usually spend a lot of time just being quiet, not talking. We don't have to be conversing all the time or communicating all the time. A lot of times we'll just put our headphones on, I might read a book, he might be doing something different. It's not like we have to be no. together doing something, even <laughs> if we're in the same space. We have music on all the time as well, plus there's an outdoor area that we're going to show you. So. I don't, there's a lot of stations in, in this tiny house and it really helps with giving each other space and making it functional. Well that looks pretty challenging over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not as bad as it looks but right now we just have this teeny tiny mirror Trevor has to shave in here. I'm gonna do my makeup here. We do actually have a bigger mirror. It just hasn't been installed yet. We have a few things 
left to do. <laughs> so our faces are almost on. Right now we have to run into town to do a few errands. Town is about 10 minutes away, so we're gonna go do that and then meet you guys right back here. So once we got to town, we decided to stop at the main beach here, Inverness Beach, and there's a storm just off the coast of Nova Scotia, a hurricane, and oh my, the waves that are coming in here right now are unbelievable. This beach is usually really calm. The town itself has everything you need though. We went to the grocery store, stopped at Route 19 for some craft beer, and then our favorite coffee shop on the way back to the tiny house. So there might be a storm passing by off the coast, but it's turned into a gorgeous day. I think it rained yesterday, and then today was kind of cloudy this morning, but they were going really, really fast. So it seemed like they were gonna leave, and they did. It's turned into a lovely day. Perfect out here, outside. It's a <laughs> little, I'd say it's kind of chilly-ish. Like you can feel the fall in the air, but with the sun on you, it's really warm. Mm. Just that kind of beginning of fall weather. Um, I can't remember if in the last video, I don't think we had this together, did I don't we? Think I think so. it was in pieces, so we did it. Yeah. We put it together. So somewhere. we have another uh, seating area. Yeah. And by another, well, we'll take them around front for those that are tuning in for the first time. There's a whole other section. Here, we can uh, show you guys here. This is the shady side at the moment at about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We have some more chairs. Yeah, we got our Adirondack chairs there. We have a picnic table in case you want to sit and eat in the shade. And we also have a hammock over there. So one of our favorite things about the location of our tiny house is that we are a short 10 minute walk away from a private beach with a waterfall on it. We can't wait to show it to you. However, hopefully it will be successful. I know we said before that the waves are really crazy. Yeah. And so it depends on the tides and that kind of thing. We might get down there and realize we can't actually get down to the beach. But yeah, I we'll think see. I think normally the water is pretty calm. Now we don't know what it's going to be like when you're there, but it is one of the things that you can do if you come and stay at our place here you'll get access to this incredible beach. And not only that, just 10 minutes by car back into town, there's an amazing beach there. There's beaches all around yeah. Cape Breton mm -hmm. and the Cabot Trail. And that's another thing we should talk about is where we are, the Cabot Trail. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it's a perfect jumping off point if you are wanting to do yes. the Cabot Trail. It's like an hour-ish from the Highlands, I'd say something like that. About, about an hour, I would say, from uh, on the west side, like by Shetty Camp to do the start of the main uh, Highlands. But even the drive from here to Shetty Camp before you go into the Highlands it's is beautiful. absolutely incredible. Is. And then the trail itself is out of this world. It's like another planet. It's, uh, we, we say this all the time, but it's one of the best drives we've ever done we've anywhere. Ever and we've done. done a lot of pretty amazing drives. <laughs> yeah, we have. So there's a lot of selling points about this place. Of course, you had Cabot Links, one of the top rated or the top rated golf course in Canada. Yep. And I think in the top 10 in the world. Yeah, that's rated in Inverness. Right here, 10 minutes away. Well, we decided we're going to take you guys down to the beach. Now that is if we can access the beach because it's very stormy out there. You wouldn't know it here though. We're kind of like in a valley, so we're protected a yeah, little we're bit. We're not sure about tides either. So if right. high tides, we maybe couldn't access it anyway. And then <laughs> the waves are crazy. Anyway, I got myself a little walking stick. We actually found this in a random gas station on the way driving to Cape Breton. So Who knew you can buy a walking stick? I mean, the thing is, we're in the forest here. We could easily just pick up a stick, but I don't know. This was a good, pretty. it was good price, and there's some carvings and etchings on it. So, uh, what do we think? Well, those are quite the waves, are like hitting the rocks over on the other side, but I think the tide is on the way out, so there's a little bit of beach. Maybe we're safe to go down. It was a little bit of an adventure getting all the way down here, but wow, is it ever worth it. It's going to be a little hard for you guys to see, but way over there, it's backlit, is the waterfall that's going right into the ocean. I can't believe how crazy this ocean is right now. Again, last time we were here was not like this. Yeah, if you're actually coming here, this is no indication of what it's like normally. I think typically you could just, it's pretty calm, you can go swimming. Yeah. Not so much today. But this does look pretty epic. Yeah. We're just crawling up here on this uh, rock because we have a bag here of goodies. How you doing there? You gonna make it? No. <laughs> this is it. Awkward. So this is awesome. The ocean is just putting on a show here from this storm. I still can't get over 
the waves. We wanted to come down and just have this like peaceful, relaxing walk across the beach, but we did find this, well, one of the corners were a little sheltered. We can't go across to show you the waterfall because there's so much spray coming off the ocean and the waterfall itself. The camera will get drenched. And then, well, I wanted to fly the drone, but that's not gonna happen either because it's way too windy. I, I promise at some point I'll get a drone shot of this whole area because it's absolutely magnificent. You guys are gonna come, have to come see this beach if you're staying at our tiny house. We uh, cracked some of the goodies, some uh, Route 19, is it? Yeah, we both ended up with a Route 19. I grabbed a couple, but um, I have the Mutiny Lager. So Route 19, I, we mentioned it previously in the video, but it is the brewery that's here in Inverness. So we kind of missed the boat for this season since it is coming on fall now. We probably don't have many beach days left, but already can't wait for next summer for some really awesome days to come down here when it's hot and sunny and the water will be much calmer. We bought the beach chairs, we can bring some beers down, maybe a lunch. Oh, maybe spend the whole day, it just sounds so amazing. So we are now back at the tiny house and it's later in the day. You can probably tell that the sun is going down. We're gonna cook some food. We're gonna show you what we're going to eat. We've got some chicken burgers in mind. We're very, very hungry right now. In here, I'm getting our chicken ready for our chicken burgers. We're honestly just doing them out of chicken breast, but seasoning them. We're also doing something for the very first time. So we bought this convection oven toaster oven also air fryer for this place. <laughs> We've never done anything air frying before. No. So we're gonna make french fries. This could be a total fail. We're, we're a little late to the game with the air, the air fryers were all the rage and maybe they still are, but here's the fries. They're, um, well, they're looking pretty good. We soaked those in water, huh? No, oh yes, sorry, yes. We cut <laughs> them up, soaked them in water for like 45 minutes, something like that, yep. dried them off, and now they're in the bowl and seasoning and some olive oil and salt and pepper. All right, let's do a chicken burger check here. I'll show you guys now. Too bad. That's not too bad at all. All right, let's try these french fries first. And honestly, from the look of them, they look more like they were done in an oven than in like a deep, deep fryer, fryer. Hmm. like traditional french fries. Ooh, what's over there? I made some aioli that's actually on our burger and I just made some extra to go with the fries. The mm. Fries are the test, huh, of this air fryer. And they taste good, but they're not overly crispy. Mm. I get mm. what you mean. They're a little bit like potato-y. Like they I guess. taste like they're in an oven. Yeah. So I don't know if I should have left them in longer. Like they're super crispy on the outside. So. Hmm. Maybe if anyone has uh, tips on an air fryer and how mm -hmm. to get these to taste like a deep fryer, let us know. Mm -hmm. On to the main event here. We have the chicken burger. We have some Havarti on here. I think we have chipotle mayo and a bit of lettuce and some other secrets. We're not going to let you in on. Let's try it. We did make this full disclosure. We made this a few nights ago and it was incredible. We never ever just took a chicken breast for the record and made a chicken burger out of one breast, but it works if you guys are wondering. Mm. This is just as good as the last time we made it. The chicken's cooked perfectly. I'd say it's slightly more well done than a few nights ago that we didn't film. But the cheese and the sauce just make this. We toasted a sesame seed um, burger bun as well. And it just rounds it out. This is so good. You can see the cheese just kind of hanging off there with these fries. I do agree with Anna. No, oh, they are good though. That one had a, mm, that one had a bite. So you can see they don't hold their shape like they're supposed to, like uh, deep fried fries, but they're still really good. I'd say they're better than oven fries. I still prefer, of course, deep fried fries, but maybe we just didn't cook them long enough. If you guys have any tips about air fryers, please let us know. All right, well, we succeeded with our meal. Here's what happened. Basically, the sun went down a little earlier than we remember. Uh, a month ago, it was going down around 8.30, 9 o'clock, or a month or so ago, and now, oh, well... No, now it's like 7.30, so yeah. <sighs> For us that like to eat later, and if we're wanting to barbecue, it kind of throws things off a little bit, but fall, we did it. 
fall is in the air or autumn. Winter is coming. <laughs> so we hope winter's coming. I love that reference. Jon Snow, Game of Thrones. Winter's always coming when you're in the north, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But we hope you guys enjoyed today's video, a day in the life here. Now try to imagine this day in the summer when the weather is warm and that beach is not rough like that. It's usually very calm. Yeah. Sandy beach, can't beat Nova Scotia in the summer. Yeah, I'm, hopefully this gave you an indication of what it's like just to live in a tiny house, what a day is like yes. in a tiny house, what it's like for us. But also, if you were coming to stay here, what it would be like. This is episode four of the Tiny House series, and we hope you guys can tell just how excited we are. And we're excited for you to come stay here at our place if you're coming to Canada, and specifically Nova Scotia, in Cape Breton, even yes. more specifically. And we will put the link to book this Airbnb below. If you're new around here, Trevor Anna, Delightful Travelers, make sure to hit subscribe, click the thumbs up button, Comment below. We love reading the comments. Share the video if you got this far. Probably means you like it. Share it with your friends. If you want to support us, we do have a Patreon channel. You can join our channel. We have lots more coming up. We have a, some big things coming up, but there's one more video left of the Tiny House series. Yeah, so we're going to give you next week a full on tour. You can see everything we did in here. It should be hopefully completed by then so we can show you absolutely everything. Yeah, it's pretty much there now. We just have a few more finishing touches, but then I promise after that, there's some big things, big things coming to the channel. We're so excited. Spoiler. Oh, no, spoiler. spoiler, spoiler alert. Well, not quite, but I want to tell you, but I can't quite yet, but just a little bit. You just have to hold out a little bit longer, maybe even a few more days longer. Maybe in the next video we'll tease it a little bit more. Hmm. We might put out an extra video about it, but we'll see. We can't wait to tell you guys especially. All right, guys, that's it. From our tiny house in Cape Breton, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.